Hello and welcome back. This is the third video in a series of videos on installing Windows 1 through 10 on a single laptop. In this video, I will be installing Windows 3.1, 95, 98SE, and Me. Picking up where we left off in the last video, I use Almay Backupper to backup the SSD. I choose to make a disk backup. Under Options, Backup Mode, I choose to make an exact backup. I give the backup a name, select the SSD, and start backing up. After the backup has completed, I extract the Windows 3.1 floppies using 7-zip. Then I mount each floppy using mDisk and copy over its contents onto the DOS 5 partition into a folder I named Win3inst. DOS has a limit of 8 characters for the folder name. I do the same for all 8 floppies. This speeds up the install and I don't have to go back and forth with writing floppies as I did for the Windows 1 and 2 installs. Then I mount the Windows 95 upgrade CD using virtual clone drive and copy the Win95 folder to the DOS 5 partition into a folder I named W95inst. Now I disconnect the SSD and reinstall it into the laptop. I put the back case back on, plug the power in, and turn the laptop on. I boot into XOSL and select the DOS Windows 1 and 2 entry. Once in, I navigate to the Win3inst directory and type setup to kick off the install. I install Windows 3.1 into the Win3.1 directory. I look at the modifications to the autoexec.bat file and make appropriate changes, same with the config.sys file. Then I restart the computer. On booting up, I boot into the DOS partition and navigate to the Win31 directory. Typing Win will launch Windows 3.1. I go to the W95inst directory and type setup to kick off the install of Windows 95. I recommend typing setup slash is to skip scan disk. Sometimes ScanDisk corrupts the files and does more harm than good. I change the install directory to Win95. I choose a custom install so I can select all the components that I want. I put in the upgrade key and configure everything. I skip the startup disk creation. Now on reboot, Windows 95 will be unable to start. This is because the laptop has 2 gigabytes of RAM. At the boot menu, I select command prompt only. From there, I navigate to the Win95 directory and edit system.ini. Under the 386 ENH section, I add max fizz page equals 3B000. More information about this can be found in the description. Then I save the file and restart. I automatically go into Windows 95. I set a name and continue with the setup. After restarting, I successfully boot into Windows 95. Now I need to enable the boot menu to be able to boot to DOS. From Windows, I launch the command prompt. I unhide the msdos.sys file by using this attribute command. Then I edit it. I need to add the following lines. More information about this can be found in the description. After adding them, I save the file, hide it using the attribute command, and restart the laptop. Now I'm able to go into the previous version of DOS, where I can run Windows 1, 2, and 3.1. Now I also need to restore XOSL. Then I navigate to the XOSL directory and launch install. I select the C drive and start the restore. 
After completing successfully, I reboot the laptop. I automatically go into XOSL. I create two more entries, one for Windows 98 SE and the other for Windows Me. For Windows 98 SE, I hide all the other partitions beside the second primary partition. For Windows Me, I hide the first two primary partitions. I choose to boot into the second primary partition or the Windows 98 SE partition. There is no operating system, but that's okay. I turn the laptop off and remove the SSD. I connect the SSD back to the PC, mount the Windows 98 SE CD using virtual clone drive, and copy over the contents of the Win98 directory into the Windows 98 SE partition under the Windows Options Tabs folder. After that's done, I disconnect the SSD and reinsert it back into the laptop. XOSL hid all the other partitions. So when I now boot, the Windows 98 SE partition is the only one visible and will be marked as the C drive. I boot up the laptop while holding down F12 so that the laptop pauses at the boot menu. I open the optical drive and put in the Windows 98 SE CD. I select to boot from CD, but choose to start the computer without CD-ROM support. So I navigate to the Windows Options Tabs folder and launch Setup. I would advise to launch Setup slash IS to skip scan this. I install Windows 98 SE into the Windows directory. I choose a custom install so I can select all the components I want. I skip the startup disk creation. I restart the laptop and Windows 98 SE also fails to boot. This is again the same issue we encountered with Windows 95. I reboot and select command prompt only. I navigate to the Windows directory and edit system.ini. I add the line, save the file, and restart the laptop. Then I can continue with the setup. The max viz page line limits the amount of memory visible to Windows to 944 megabytes. Everything completes successfully and I get into Windows 98 SE. I shut down the laptop and take the SSD app. I need to restore XOSL. To do this, I need to unhide the DOS partition and mark it active on the SSD. I connect it to the PC and using Alme Partition Assistant, I unhide the DOS 5 partition and make it active. Then I remove the SSD and put it back into the laptop. Now that the DOS partition is active, I can use it to restore XOSL. I turn on the laptop and it goes right to the Windows 95 boot menu. I restore XOSL as I did before. I advise using PTSDE to check whether the Windows NT serial needs to be restored. After restoring XOSL, I boot into Windows Me. Again, no OS is installed yet, but this is just to prepare the MVR. I disconnect the SSD and reconnect it to the PC. I mount the Windows Me CD using Virtual Clone Drive and copy the Win9x folder into the Windows Me partition under the Windows Options Tabs folder, just as I did with Windows 98 SE. Next, I disconnect the SSD and reconnect it into the laptop. I turn on the laptop and boot from the Windows 98 SC CD that is still in the laptop. As before, I select to start without CD-ROM support to get to the command prompt. I navigate to Windows Options tab and type setup to launch the Windows Me installation. Again, I advise to use setup slash is to skip scan disk. I install Windows under the Windows directory and I choose a custom install so I can select all the components I want. I skip the startup disk creation. When Windows reboots, it gets stuck. I hold Ctrl, Alt, and Delete to reboot it and boot from the CD again to get to the command prompt. From there, I navigate to Windows and edit system.ini. However, Windows Me doesn't seem to come with the edit command, so I insert a boot disk that has the edit command. Then, I use this command to edit the system.ini file. Once again, I add the max page line, save the file, and reboot.
now I'm able to continue with the setup. The rest of the setup process completes successfully and I am able to get into Windows Me. That just about wraps up this video. If you liked it or found it helpful, please like and subscribe. See you in the next one.